she's making her stand-up comedy debut, please put your hands together for Pamela Weibel. I'm a doctor, and I <laughs> I work in uh, New York City and Oregon. I'm bi-coastal, and I'm in therapy. <laughs> yeah, so people in Oregon, way different than New York. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they like to make eye contact with you, <laughs> and they smile. They're stoned. <laughs> oh man, yeah, so uh, my therapist, you know, I love Oregon, but it's so slow. Uh, she, she says, it's okay, Pamela. You're moving at cocaine speed in a marijuana state. <laughs> you know, the problem is, Leaving New York City is the culture shock. Easing my way back into the non-consensual hugging. Uh, my neighbor invited me over for dinner. Uh, I come over with uh, you know, a bottle of wine and find myself uh, on the floor uh, in a group hug for three hours. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it felt like I was breastfeeding uh, 10 hippies. <laughs> you know, it's legal to go topless uh, in Oregon and New York City. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Part of the free the nipple movement. <laughs> and Oregon is so progressive that breast painting is considered a family activity. <laughs> along with the naked midnight bike riding. And that's not some kind of Oregon stereotype. Uh, that's what I do with my patients. <laughs> and you know that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I went to med school in Texas, and Texas is number one in executions. <laughs> my med school is world famous. I'm in the only, what's the only med school inside a prison hospital? <laughs> you think they would have mentioned that on the application? <laughs> you know, I show up day one, 21 years old, and uh, my patients are rapists and serial killers. <laughs> you know, but uh, it had its upside. When it came to appointments, all of them were there. <laughs> on time. <laughs> Another big perk is uh, my tuition was subsidized by the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. <laughs> you know, so my death row uh, criminals, they paid for their crimes and my medical education. <laughs> you know, I was learning to do rectal exams on murderers. <laughs> Prostate feels pretty good, but your cholesterol's up. That could kill you. Oh, man. So uh, it was crazy, you know, uh, ordering heart-healthy meals for patients on death row. I mean, to, but really, like, to graduate on time, I had to keep them alive till we killed them. <laughs> Man. And to put this in really some context, for the previous four years, I was at an all-women's college. So I hadn't really been around men in years, like forever. And I found myself on the front line of America's most wanted rectums. <laughs> and I had the most wanted finger. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, I mean, like, Picture this, imagine, I'm like this sweet, compassionate, loving, idealistic young woman with my finger up the ass of a serial killer. <laughs> Two big guards behind me. Uh, that's kind of hot, right? <laughs> oh man, I I'm thinking, uh, isn't this every woman's fancy? 
Yeah, I mean, truly, I was the most wanted of the most wanted. <laughs> you know, when it, uh, you know, trying to convince these guys to eat less meat, more vegetables, you know. <laughs> I mean, these guys were real carnivores. A couple were cannibals. I I'm talking kale smoothies, and they're thinking, I'd like to eat your elbows. <laughs> Death row healthcare, that's an oxymoron. But I deal with a lot of oxymorons and morons on oxy. <laughs> you know, so as a physician uh, in Oregon, I was licensed to provide, uh, to perform actually, I'm licensed to perform right now physician assisted suicide. And in Texas, I'm licensed to perform physician assisted homicide. <laughs> So I feel very comfortable working in both states, Oregon and Texas, because in both states, I can legally kill you. 